Hey boys and girls, Pastor James here, and it's almost Christmas, and I wanted to share with you a story. Uh, a book was given to me by uh, very dear friends of mine down in Baltimore. Uh, my friend's grandmother came over from Italy, and she thought I would like this book called um, Jingle Bell Christmas. Um, pa, pa. Rat -a -tat -tat, like rat -a -tat -tat. um pa pa um pa pa tiddly tiddly dee tiddly tiddly dee um pa pa um pa pa. Nothing sounded happier to Jingle than the music of the band filling the air as Il Cerco Piccolo, the little circus, traveled across the countryside. Jingle rode with the baby animals. The older clowns said that he was still too young and small to perform with them. So it was Jingle's job to take care of the babies. Frick, frack, smick and spack, be still, he called to the baby monkeys, who were jumping back and forth between Sparkle the pony and Peta the donkey. The baby elephant's trunk drooped. Don't worry, Lolly, we'll be there soon and you can rest. Every year, Il Cerco Piccolo stopped at the same village before going on to the big city where it performed from the, from the day after Natale, Christmas, until Capendano, New Year's Day. On the Vigilia di Natale, Christmas Eve, there would be a special show for the village. It was Jingle's favorite night. All the villagers, young and old, laughed and clapped and cheered. There's the village, the impresario shouted out. It looks different, said Madame Sophie, the bareback rider. There's no smoke coming out of the chimneys. Everything looks closed up, said Rollo, the tightrope walker. A cold gust of wind blew across the hills and the aerialist family shivered. Where is everyone? they asked. As the circus troupe looked on, a small group of people climbed up the hill to meet them. Buongiorno, Signor Mayor, created the impresario. Il Circo Piccolo is here once again, ready to perform on Christmas Eve. Oh, impresario, the mayor said, puffing from his climb. I have sad news. I'm afraid there can be no circus this year. Too much rain in the spring and a hot, dry summer have ruined our crops, and many families have left our village. There is hardly anyone here. Our little mill has stopped, the miller's wife said. My husband had to go to another town to look for work. Only we old timers are left, Pietro, the barber, told them. Most of our shops have closed. Even the church has closed, said Signora Lena, who used to clean the priest's house. We have to go all the way to the next town for the Holy Mass. So we won't be celebrating Christmas here this year, the mayor added sadly. And we certainly can't afford the circus either. We're sorry, everyone. This is terrible, the impresario said. What shall we do, asked the clowns Toto and Clippo. Let's keep going to the city, said Il Muscolo, the strong man. If we hurry, we can get the tents up and do a Christmas Eve performance there. Yes, yes, you're right, the impresario agreed. Let's get moving. Everyone, everyone, let's get moving. Arrivederci, my friends. We are sorry for your troubles, and we hope that next year things will be better for you. Impresario, sir, a small voice said. It was Jingle. What is it, Jingle? the impresario asked. The baby animals, signore. They are too tired and too small to go all that way now. We have been traveling all day. Can't we rest here tonight and go tomorrow? If we wait, we'll lose too much time, Il Muscolo complained. Let Jingle stay here with the babies. We can come back for them after the Christmas Eve performance, Madame Sophie suggested. It's only the day after tomorrow, said Toto and Clippo. Will you be all right, Jingle? The impresario asked. The little clown nodded sadly. Jingle, you can set up your tent near my barn, offered Dona Chiara. Every winter she let the circus stay in her fields. 
We will help, some of the old people said. A small tent shouldn't be too hard. So it was decided. Il Serpo Piccolo would move on, and Jingle and the baby animals would stay behind. Jingle watched as the wagons rode away. Poor Jingle. Poor baby animals. They, are tr they all tried not to cry. In no time, a small tent was pitched for Jingle and the babies, and the wagon was parked nearby. Jingle got food and water for them all. Donna Chiara came out into, to them. Well, bambini, my children, she said, I am sorry that you have to be here in our sad little village, especially with Christmas coming. Nobody young, not even baby animals, should be without Christmas. But what about you and all the others, Jingle asked. Won't you miss Christmas? We old folks have had many Christmases before, Dona Chiara said with a smile. And the priest is coming on Christmas Day to celebrate the Holy Mass. But I will miss our Mass on the Vigilia di Napoli, she said sadly. And everyone will miss the family feast that night and the Stellini Adoro, our special cookies that look like golden stars. But we have our memories, so it won't be too bad. But Jingle saw the tears in her eyes. Well, buona notte, mi piccini. Good night, little ones, Donna Chiara said, and she went into her home. Now Jingle began to feel sorrier for the villagers than for himself and the baby animals. It's so sad, babies. Jingle said to the animals, I can't even imagine no Christmas. I wish there were something we could do for our friends. The baby animals gathered around him. Arthur and Bowsy, the puppies, hopped up into Jingle's lap. Reina, the tiger cub, and Simbo, the lion cub, snuggled next to him. Even Frick, Frack, Smick, and Smack stopped chasing each other around and looked at Jingle. Suddenly, Arthur and Bowsy jumped down and began to dance around like the big dogs. Lolly stood on her hind legs while the cubs swatted their paws like the big cats. That's it, Jingle cried. We will put on a circus of our own for the village. We have all day tomorrow to get ready. We will make a Christmas for the town. Everyone, sit still now and let me think. Early the next morning, Jingle went to the village square and put up a sign. The mayor came out of his house. Oh, piccolo piccoliaccio, little clown, the mayor said. You are kind, but we can't have a circus this year. We are too poor. But, Signor Mayor, it says it's free, Signor Elena said. But it also says in the town square, and it's starting to snow, Pietro pointed out. You won't be able to perform here tonight. It will be all right. I know it will, Jingle said. Please come. Ah, Jingle, Dona Chiara said when Jingle told her what he had and the animals were going to do. You have such a big heart. Caro mio, I shall help too. I can sew your costumes. Dona Chiara sat and sewed while Jingle rehearsed with the baby animals. Outside, snow fell all day long. I know it will be all right, Jingle kept telling himself. I know in my heart we mustn't give up. Now, once more. It's time, everyone. Jingle stepped out of the tent. The night took its, his breath away. The snow had stopped and the stone streets sparkled with white. Stars looking like thigh diamonds flung up by a giant hand twinkled in the deep blue velvet sky. Donna Chiara walked to the town square with Jingle and his troop. Lolly swept away the snow in a big circle. Sparkle and Pita packed it down with their hooves. The monkeys climbed all over the place, putting up ropes. Time to put on our costumes, Jingle said. Next, he took the instruments out of the trunk and gave them to the monkeys. Then the little troop marched around the square, banging the drums and tooting horns. Donna Chiara knocked on the doors and shutters. Slowly, one after another, shutters opened and then doors. The villagers came out of their houses and Jingle's circus began. Arthur and Bowsy jumped on and off Sparkle and Pita as they trotted around. 
Lolly danced. Simbo and Reina jumped through hoops. The monkey swung on ropes and trapezes, and Jingle trembled better than he had ever tumbled before. The audience clapped and cheered. And now, friends, our finale, Jingle announced proudly. The baby animals formed a pyramid. Jingle gave each of them a candle, and there, in the middle of the square, stood a living Christmas tree. One by one, the villagers went into their houses and put lighted candles in their windows. Look, look, the old people whispered and pointed to the pyramid. The Christmas angel had appeared at the top of the living Christmas tree. The angel opened its hands and golden stars fluttered down. Buon Natale, the angel sang. Buon Natale, Merry Christmas, the villagers sang back. And when they looked at Jingle and the baby animals to thank them for their gift of Christmas, there, shining over Jingle's heart, was one of the golden stars. Wasn't that a lovely story telling me that we don't have to be old, but we can be young and still bring Christmas to others who need to hear the news of God's love. I pray this Christmas you have a joyous time and that you're filled with many blessings as you bless your parents and grandparents your aunts and uncles, your sisters and brothers, your sibling, uh, your cousins, and all those that you'll meet when you go back to school in the new year. Until then, I'm saying Merry Christmas to you all, and I love you all. Goodbye. <laughs>